up it goes. Down it goes. Russell fires. Scores! The clock will run out. That is a wrap. Seymour is going to the Nets. If that's not the definition of March Madness, you know, I don't know what is. For the first time since 2000, the Red Hawks of Southeast Missouri State are dancing. We welcome you back and welcome to the show the head coach of the Ohio Valley Conference champs, Brad Korn, and senior guard Chris Harris. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Coach, we usually start these conversations with talking about how your team is playing and the mechanics of the game, but how cool is it to be on the SEMO campus with what you guys have done in the last few weeks? I, you know what, Greg, it's, it's remarkable, really, just uh, to have everybody be a part of it, from the community to the university, uh, to see the look on the guys' faces and families and friends and uh, young boys and girls. Just the, yeah. the way that March Madness encapsulate, encapsulates all of that is just its absolutely tremendous and really a powerful thing for this region. Hey, Chris, Seth Davis, congratulations. I want to take you back to your first year on campus. You were doing great. You're the team's leading scorer. You blow out your knee. Your season is over. What did you learn from that experience that's helping you today? Uh, just really just stay humble and stay ready. Uh, it's always going to be a process. No matter what you're doing, it's never going to come easy. So, you know, when that happened, it was, a, it was definitely a step back for me, but it was a chance for me to kind of hone and get better at some of the other things in my life, like consistency and becoming a better man of God and staying consistent in my faith and stuff like that. So I feel like those minor setbacks ultimately helped me as I got older and got onto this stage. Kudos to you, Chris, for that kind of perspective and persistence. You've gone on a bit of a rip here lately in terms of your production, averaging 22 points a game over your last seven. What might you attribute that to, your increased production recently? Uh, I think it's just it comes from just a passion I have to play the game and not being ready to give it up yet. Uh -huh. uh, we, <clears throat> we have a great group of guys who help me get going, and we have a great group of unselfish guys who, who want to see me do good. So uh, as much as I want to take the credit for it, I definitely can't. My guys are the ones behind me and pushing me and enabling me to do this. Well said, Chris. This is Jay Wright. Congratulations, man. And you know what? Uh, your coach sitting next to you, you might be like him one day because, uh, Brad, you – you played for Bruce Weber, Matt Painter. Uh, you've got great bloodlines, like Chris is going to have one day. What, what did you learn from those guys? Yeah, Coach, it just this will be the 11th NCAA tournament I've been a part of as a player or as a coach. And just as you mentioned, just being surrounded by great people. I was told a long time ago, uh, surround yourself with great people. You'd be amazed on how far they can take you. And I, I don't take any of these for granted. Uh, you just, as a player, you just do what the coach says, and we had a great run there. Um, and now, looking back on us, being able to lead a team like this to the NCAA tournament the first time in 23 years is really a lot of what I learned from Coach Weber and those guys, and the way they treated us, and the way that our program was ran. It was a player's first program, and it's just you, you feel more invested when it's that way. And uh, just the way that we were treated, the experiences, uh, the places that you go, the game, the places the game has taken me across this world the relationships, all of those things that we know as coaches, uh, but now to be able to pass this on to another generation of basketball guys yeah. is really something that you can't quantify. Well said, my man. Well said. Chris, I know it's an exciting time for you guys right now, and I know you're going to be excited. There's no suspense, but your name's going to get called unless Greg has other ideas uh, <laughs> sometime between 6 and 7. How do you... not Greg. <laughs> <laughs> how, Chris, how do you flush all that and now get ready to, to play another game? I mean, I'm sure you want to keep the season going, so how, how do you put that in the past and focus on what's ahead? Right. I mean, I feel like, honestly, it just comes down to staying consistent and doing what we've been doing the whole season long. So it's just, you know, making sure we're prepared and we're doing all the things in our power in order to go out there and play a good game of 40 minutes and be able to come out on top. So it comes down to preparation and also the things that we've done in the past that's going to lead up to this point. Coach and Chris, I imagine you guys will be comfortably seated around 6 o'clock this evening, so we can't wait till it happens. I'm sure you can't either. Congratulations to you both. Hey, we'll all be watching. Thanks so much for joining us. Back to our game now. The Atlantic 10 title is on the line as VCU and Dayton prepare to battle in Brooklyn.